You can see my cheek just. I'm gonna show you the whole fit. Anyways, thank you so much for hopping back onto this little channel. In this video, we are going back to oil pastels. That's right, we are finally drawn. We're taking a little break from sculpting. I'm sculpted out. But can you tell who we're doing today? We're doing Bride of Frankenstein. Damn. I thought you would understand, of all people. Do I look like a bride? So let's get into the Bride of Frankenstein. Meet me at the desk. Bring your, uh... Don't bring anything, actually. This is draw. Come on. Are you ready to draw? So get out your stuff. Uh, so here's my sketch pad and my oil pastels. I started with green because, you know, the Bride of Frankenstein. Here's my reference photo. I wanted to go super whimsical and super, like, you know, mysterious. I obviously wanted to do a portrait to match the Franken Frankenstein's monster one that you saw in the beginning. I wanted her to have a huge forehead, but I had to take into consideration that her hair is super big. Her hair is super big, and I wanted it to come through with this drawing, but I have some limitations with the size of the paper because obviously I can't make the paper any longer. So that's why you see me kind of scraping off a whole bunch of oil pastels because I wasn't liking the composition. I also did not like her face in the beginning. I did like her nose. You won't see the nose change but you will see the sides of the head and the and the eyeballs change so much in this drawing but i'll let y'all watch And this is where I felt like I was losing a little bit. As you can see, I was kind of going along with it, but watch. I just start scraping everything off the eye. It just wasn't popping enough for me. It wasn't It wasn't giving the depth that I was hoping. I don't know what, maybe the black I was using wasn't, you know, that dark or something, but everything just felt very monotone and not as bright. I did realize that I wasn't using enough white in the eye, so I did kind of brighten them up just a little bit. Uh, but I started focusing on something else like the cheeks, the lips, which, in my opinion, was the easiest part of the whole drawing because you know it's not the eyeballs, the eyes are the, the eyes is what really makes a drawing, in my opinion. The lips aren't nah, the nose is kind of, uh, but the eyes are what really draws people in. The nose was the most exciting part to me. It was so simple, so easy. You know, you just fill in a couple of shapes and kind of mold the nose a little bit. I feel like it's really easy. And people don't really pay attention to the nose. You can, you know, slap a nose on a drawing. You ain't really looking at it. Or maybe you are, I don't know. But I'm gonna let y'all watch. Listen, I'm just as surprised as you. I'm surprised there's paper underneath this drawing because the amount of times I just scraped off the eyeballs, they just were not working for me at all. And it was driving me up the wall. And it also didn't look like the actress at all. So I looked at my proportions again. They were kind of off. So I scraped off the sides of the head and kind of remolded it. I also did a little bit of the background to help me differenti differentiate the... <laughs> the background and the the size of the face anyways my original goal was to have the face be like a teal blue the background to be purple and the hair to be like this very mysterious white fun fact let me get let me throw some fun facts at you because i know y'all like them the hair in the original bride of frankenstein was actually like a kind of like an orangish red and I don't know if that's because of the cameras back then. They had to, you know, do a whole bunch of things in color because, you know, the cameras do, do black and white differently. But uh, 
I don't know. That's a, that's a good question. Does anybody know the answer? Anyways, that's why I didn't do the hair uh, black and white because I wanted to, I don't know, I wanted to do the, do the hair red. Anyways, this is the neck. Also, have y'all seen Bride of Frankenstein? The, you know, the old Universal movie? Listen, if you are a fan of like those pretty old timey movies, watch it because this movie is actually really stunning. Like it's really pretty. It, you know, the storyline don't make no sense and it's, you know, spoiler alert, like the Bride of Frankenstein is literally like in it for five minutes at the end of the movie. So, you know, don't get your hopes up, but go watch it. Like for a movie that's almost, you know, a hundred years old, damn. But anyways, I'm doing the background now. So the background kind of tripped me up a little bit, but I know I wanted to go that vintage like circle in the background. I don't know if that is that a vintage kind of look. I don't know, but I did like a circle in the background. Of, I don't know, like a vignette, like old time. I don't know. It reminded me of like old time. Anyways, yeah, scratch that shit up. I did try to keep it a little minimal in the face because I didn't think about the, all the layers that I put underneath. Now, one thing about when you're doing like these little scratches is if you put a dark color underneath and you put a light color of top, the when you when you scratch it's gonna be dark. So keep that in mind when you're scratching. That's why I usually put a light color underneath. In the beginning when I was doing the hair, for instance, I put a whole bunch of white pastel down and then I went in with a whole bunch of red and black so that it will really pop. As you can see here, look at that. Oof, it's so scrumptious. Here she is! She we're done! He finally met his wife! Look at it! Now I'm a third wheel. I should rip this up out of spite. Cause I don't third wheel. Not in this house. I'm done. I'm done looking at her. That was a journey. And once again, thank you so much for hopping on this video. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know. If you have any comments or suggestions on what I should do next, please let me know down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell so you know when I post because I am a little random. I hope you have a nice and spooky rest of your October. And hopefully I come up with more ideas before the end of spooky season. But if I don't, I hope you guys stay spooky, stay creative, and I don't know. Bye.